For the final part of our app, we're going to modify the list of swipe actions for our list to include another button, which will let users say, remind me to contact this person tomorrow. This is going to use iOS's user notifications framework to make a local notification. And we'll conditionally include that in our swipe actions here by building on the same condition we have for our current swipe actions up here. If they are contacted, show one button. Otherwise, show a second button here. Firstly, yes, mark contacted, but also remind me in the future. Now, that's the easy part. Much more interesting is how we actually schedule a local notification. Now, remember the first time we tried this, we've got to call request authorization to ask the user, do you want to allow the app to have notifications or not? Then though, in the future, all subsequent times we want to place a notification, we've got to be careful because the user can retroactively change their mind and withdraw permission. So I can say to us, yes, go ahead and show alerts all you want to, it's fine. Then later on, go to settings, notifications, our app, and turn off our app support. So we've got to be careful. One option here is to call request authorization every time we want to post a notification. Honestly, it works great. Like it works really, really well. The first time you do that, it'll show an alert to the user saying, do you want to allow the app to yada, 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 yada? Great. All subsequent times, it'll either succeed or fail immediately based on the user's private, uh, prior, previous choice. So it's really, really nice. However, in the interest of completion, I wanna show a slightly different approach, it's more powerful. We can request from the system the current authorization settings and use that to determine whether we can schedule a notification now or request permission. Now, the reason it's helpful to use this approach rather than just doing it every single time is because the information we get given back to us, the alert settings, will tell us, oh, actually, the user said you can have a badge over your icon, but not sounds and not alerts. So you can query things in a much more fine-grained way. So we're gonna call get notification settings to read whether these alerts are currently allowed or not. If they are, we'll show one. If they aren't, we'll request permissions. And if that works, we'll then show a notification. So you can see we either show an alert immediately or get permission, then show alert. Either way, there are two places we're gonna show an alert. So we'll put that code inside a closure that can be called in either scenario. So first things first, add a new import up here, import user notifications. And now we'll add a new method down here that will be called func add notification for prospect a prospect. Inside here we'll do let center equals a un user notification center dot current and then make our closure, which will be uh, to add a single request for notifications to the current app. So we'll say let add request be a new closure. Let content equals our uh, content to show. So that's UN mutable notification content. Uh, the title will be contact prospect prospect dot name. The subtitle is going to be prospect or email address. The sound will be a UN notification sound dot default. In terms of when to show the alert, we'll use a date components. So we'll say date components equals a new date components. Date components dot hour is nine o'clock, so nine a.m. in the morning. And our trigger for that will be a UN calendar notification trigger, date matching, date matching, those components, repeats false. So that's our content and our trigger. We can now put into request, UN notification request. Identifier will be a random ID, it's fine. UID string with our content and our trigger. And finally, call center to add that request. And after the closure, more code to come. So let's recap. We're showing a reminder to contact a particular person at a particular email address with a default sound. We're making a date components 
In this case, it's an hour component of nine, but nothing else. No minute, no second, no day. Da, da, da. So we're saying 9 a.m. on any day. And with that, making a calendar notification, which will be 9 a.m. the next day. Don't repeat, one day only. And then putting that in the system, ready to go. But it's in a closure called add request. So we can call that whenever we want to in the future really nicely. For testing purposes though, I would recommend you comment out this let trigger equals line, because that requires 9 a.m. to run the actual code. Replace it with this instead for testing purposes. Let trigger equals a UN time interval notification trigger with time interval five repeats false. So now we're saying show the alert five seconds from now. So it's great for testing purposes. That's step one. For the second part of the method down here, we're going to use both get notification settings and request authorization together to make sure we only schedule these alerts when we're allowed to. We'll then call the add request closure we defined above already here uh, because the same code can be used if we have permission already or if we ask and been granted permission. So down here in more code to come, we'll say center.get notification settings. It'll pass us the settings coming in. And now we can say if settings dot authorization settings status, sorry, equals dot authorized. Great, we're good to go. Add request. Boom. If we're still here, it means it's not authorized, something else. We can now say center, I should be equals equals, sorry, equals equals. Center dot request authorization. We'll ask for the full set of options, which is alert, badge, and sound. Uh, don't try and do critical alert. That requires approval from Apple and CarPlay's a bit finicky too. But this one's very important, but only Apple get to approve that one. Uh, completion handler will be a closure saying success and error in. And we'll say if success, call and request again. Else just print dope. Like that. And that's all the code it takes to schedule a notification for a particular prospect at a particular time. So now all that remains is to add an extra button to our swipe actions up here. So if they're contacted already, great. If they're not, you want to have Mark contacted, of course. But we're going to add below that a new button. Add notification for that prospect with the label. Label remind me and system image of bell in a tint of orange. And now give it a try. So you want to get ready to press Command L, which triggers the lock screen in your hardware. And it's up here somewhere. They are Command L lock. So you can basically say, remind me of a particular person. Uh, this person here, perhaps take that off and then type out again. And there's remind me. I press it the first time and it will say, do you want to allow notifications? And I'll say yes, then press Command L and wait, hopefully. Boom, contact me at the email address. It works brilliantly. Now remember, this testing thing of five seconds, obviously don't ship that, be very annoying. Um, you want to switch across to, uh, you know, delete that and put this back in place again, back to the 9 a.m. thing, otherwise it's very annoying. But for testing, it's much, much easier to have a time interval notification trigger than a calendar one instead. And with that, we have finished the current step and finished our project too. Give it a try. You can go ahead and add prospects as many as you want to, scan QR codes, make your own QR code, add them to the lock screen like this. It all works. Good job.